All right, so I told you I was going to tell you about three projects uh, in this part of the talk. And the third is some of the work uh, that I've been involved with, uh, with a gaggle of friends and collaborators. Because uh, John Doris is the main figure up there, Kaiping Peng uh, is uh, the main person doing the work that I'll tell you about in China. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this work was inspired uh, by Nisbet's work, but not the culture of honor stuff, another branch of uh, what Nisbet is doing. Um, Nisbet, uh, in more recent work, uh, reports, uh, or claims at least, uh, to have evidence that East Asian cultures, so EA is East Asian up there, East Asian cultures are more collectivist than Western W cultures, uh, which are more individualist. Uh, the East Asian conception of a person, according to Nisbet, but relying on a lot of other uh, very rich and significant literature, the work of Hazel Marcus uh, and Kitayama and others, uh, the East Asian conception of the person emphasizes the social role of that person, mother, teacher, and so on, and de-emphasizes context-independent attributes like being honest or gregarious. Right? This suggests, at least, that East Asians would take a harsher view of transgressions that are destructive of collective or group ties, and a more lenient view of transgressions that benefit or actions that benefit the group. So that was our motivation. Now note, if that's right, that is to say, if these psychological, deep psychological differences in one's conception of what it is to be a person or what's important uh, about being a person uh, have significant impact on moral judgments, then it's very plausible, I think, uh, that the resulting disagreement is fundamental. So I want to tell you about two experiments, um, uh, one or sets of experiments. Uh, one of them was carried out uh, entirely in English. The subjects were uh, <clears throat> students at the University of California at Berkeley, where Kaiping Peng is. Uh, some of them were Asian uh, <clears throat> Americans, some of them were non-Asian Americans, uh, but uh, typically second, third generation in, or more in each case. Second experiment, uh, <clears throat> the Asians were Chinese Chinese, uh, that is to say uh, Chinese students uh, at, in, in Beijing, and non-Asian undergraduates uh, at the University of California at Santa Cruz. And for this one, of course, the experimental material was translated into Chinese and then back translated and translated again if necessary. All right, so I'll tell you about three, uh, we actually use several more, but I'll tell you about three of the scenarios we looked at. Uh, this one, of course, is a classic uh, in the philosophical literature. Uh, we call it the magistrate and the mob. So let me read it to you quickly. An unidentified member of an ethnic group is known to be responsible for a murder that occurred in a town. This causes many of the townspeople to become extremely hostile towards the ethnic group. Because the town has a history of severe ethnic conflict and rioting, the town's police chief and judge know that if they do not immediately identify and punish a culprit, the townspeople will start anti-ethnic rioting that will cause a great deal of damage to property owned by members of the ethnic group and a considerable number of serious injuries and deaths in the ethnic population. But nobody in the community knows who the murderer is or where to find him. The police chief and the judge are faced with a dilemma. They can falsely accuse, convict, and imprison Mr. Smith, an innocent member of the ethnic group, in order to prevent the riots. Or they can continue hunting for the guilty man, thereby allowing the anti-ethnic riots to occur, and do the best they can to combat the riots until the guilty man is apprehended. After discussing and debating their options at length, the police chief and the judge decide to falsely accuse, convict, and imprison Mr. Smith, the innocent member of the ethnic group, in order to prevent the riots. They do so, thereby preventing the riots and preventing considerable number of ethnic group deaths and serious injuries. So, how many of you think the magistrate and the judge did the right thing? Um, well, let's see, how many of you are paraplegic and wouldn't raise your... All right, uh, not at all surprising, okay? Why is it not all surprising? Well, the Western, I stress Western, philosophical consensus on cases like this couldn't be more clear. Uh, here's a comment by Paul Bloomfield. Uh, Judges ought not to find the innocent guilty in order to prevent riots in the streets, period. 
And here is one of my favorite quotes. I'm, I'm sure many of you know it. In fact, uh, the challenge is, how does it end? I'll show you if you don't know. But someone who really thinks in advance that it's open to question whether such an action as procuring ju the judicial execution of the innocent is permissible should be quite excluded from consideration. I don't want to argue with him. Anybody knows the next, know the next line? No? Oh? He shows a corrupt mind, uh, and this is a quote from Elizabeth Anston in 1958, but even uh, adamant utilitarians like J.J.C. Smart uh, admit that cases like the magistrate and the mob are particularly problematic for them. But uh, in both experiment one and experiment two, uh, what we found is that the Asians are significantly less inclined to make the judgments that Bloomfield uh, and Anscombe take to be obvious. Uh, so I'm not going to go through this all in detail. It's a long study with lots of data. Uh, but let me just gesture at it. We asked uh, 20 questions uh, approximately of each subject about each scenario. Uh, here are some of the moral questions. The police chief and the judge did the morally right thing, did the morally wrong thing, and so on. We also asked a bank of non-moral or factual questions uh, like uh, being falsely accused and convicted uh, in prison calls Mr. Smith to suffer, his family to suffer, and so on. Okay? What we found was that the Chinese are significantly less likely to think that the police chief and the judge, uh, <clears throat> what the police chief and the judge did was morally wrong. They are independently, uh, or quasi-independently since we asked these as separate questions, they're significantly more likely to think uh, what uh, the judge and the magistrate did or police chief did was morally right. They're significantly less likely to say that the police chief and the judge should be punished. And they're, uh, <clears throat> much more, they're significantly more likely to hold that the potential rioters are the ones responsible for the scapegoating, suggesting that they attribute moral responsibility at the level of the collective, much more so than their individualist counterparts in the West. All right, that's uh, probe number one. Here's probe number two the promiscuity case. Jack and Debbie have been happily married for 15 years. Jack's best friend from childhood, Casey, is passing through town on business. Jack and Debbie invite him to stay at their house for a few days. All three of them have a great time drinking, eating, laughing, and talking over old times. On the morning before Casey is scheduled to leave, Jack is called to work to deal with an emergency. Casey, old friend, Jack says, I'm sorry I won't be here to see you off but I want you to enjoy our fullest hospitality. Looking meaningfully at Debbie, Jack says, Debbie will be pleased to see to your every need, won't you, Debbie? The implication is clear. Jack is inviting Casey to have sex with his wife. After Jack leaves, Debbie and Casey have sex. <laughs> Here are some of the questions we asked. Uh, they're sort of the obvious ones, similar to the ones we asked before. The results. Chinese subjects are, again, significantly more likely to agree that this behavior is morally wrong, significantly less likely to agree that it's morally right. They were more likely to think that Jack should be punished for what he did. Uh, they were more likely to think that Jack should have been prevented from doing what he did. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, as we see it, these results uh, suggest, at least, that the Chinese subjects were more likely to think that sexual behavior uh, <clears throat> Uh, is appropriately morally condemned and subject to punitive responses uh, and legitimately interfered with, uh, which is the sort of thing that would be predicted by the Nisbet-inspired hypothesis that Chinese culture is more collectivist, since, after all, sexual behavior is intuitively, at least, a threat to the family, uh, which is among the more uh, important uh, forms of association in a collectivist culture. All right, third example. Jack and Debbie have been happily married for 15 years. Jack's best friend Casey from childhood is passing through town on business, and Jack and Debbie invite him to stay at their house for a few days. All three of them have a great time drinking, eating, laughing, and taking, talking over old times. On the morning, by the way, each uh, uh, participant got only one of these, so we're not you know, hitting them over the head with Jack and Debbie. Uh, <clears throat> On the morning before Casey is scheduled to leave, Jack is called to work to deal with an emergency. When he returns home a few hours later, he finds Debbie and Casey lying on the couch naked in each other's arms. They have obviously been having sex. 
Jack is enraged. His best friend and his wife have betrayed him. Bastard, he shouts at Casey. How can you insult a man like this when you are a guest in his home? Casey tries to respond, but before he can do anything, Jack pulls a knife, stabbing him and killing him. Okay? Subjects were asked many of the same questions, parallel questions, and uh, a few additional ones uh, <clears throat> of a of factual sort, uh, the obvious ones that you could uh, uh, add, uh, like these. The results. Chinese subjects uh, were less likely to think that the homicide committed by Jack was morally wrong, more likely to think it was morally right, less likely to think that Jack should be punished. Uh, they were more likely to assert, uh, to assent to statements like, uh, if what, and this is a really interesting one, if what Jack did was customary in his culture, it would be morally right. So we got significantly higher assent to this, uh, these were all liquor did, of course, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in the Asian uh, culture. Again, uh, we think that most of these results can be explained by the hypothesis that Chinese morality is more collectivist. The Chinese subjects are more tolerant of violence in response to anti-collective behavior, uh, in particular uh, the individual pursuit of sexual gratification at the expense of an important element of a central collective, namely the family. Now, if that's right, that is to say, if What's going on here is we have differences in moral judgments about particular cases uh, that grow in part out of uh, this very deep difference uh, <clears throat> between Chinese uh, or East Asians and Westerners uh, in the extent to which they conceive of a person as intrinsically a member of a collective as opposed to uh, as intrinsically an individual who may be associated with various groups, then uh, I think it's extremely plausible, uh, certainly not a knockdown argument, but extremely plausible that that disagreement is fundamental. Again, to see why, consider some of the standard diffusing explanations. Okay? Well, in particular, uh, first of all, we did ask uh, a bank of, for each uh, participant and uh, for each scenario or vignette, uh, a bunch of uh, non-moral questions like what Casey did, what Casey and Debbie did cause Jack to suffer and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, there were no differences between uh, the, Eastern, uh, the, the Westerners and the East Asians, or the uh, Westerners and the Chinese on those questions. Uh, similarly, uh, it's hard to see how either group could be considered impartial or more impartial or less impartial on these kinds of things uh, since after all these are third party judgments uh, where uh, it's hard to see that the participants making these judgments are uh, <clears throat> involved or impacted in any direct way so partiality looks to be a non-starter well what about rationality well it's kind of hard to take seriously the suggestion that one group or the other uh, suffers from significant irrationality, or uh, that 1.2 billion Chinese have corrupt minds, uh, as Miss Anscombe apparently uh, is committed to claiming. 